Hello and welcome to Catholic Truths. Today we're going to be going over my conversion story. Now after um, conferring with my wife, we decided that I would make this video into two parts. The first part being my upbringing in the Church of Christ um, leading up to my conversion and my um, second video will be discussing the actual conversion into the Catholic Church and what happened as a result of that. So um, that's what we'll be doing today. Um, I'm still a little new at this, so please excuse any um, grammar fault flaws or um, a lot of ums maybe. I do have an outline, as I said, my wife wanted me to use an outline to help me along, so I will be doing that too. So if you see me looking down, I'll be um, looking at some notes and stuff. Um, now, I was raised in the Church of Christ. Now, I'm going to give an ex explanation of what the Church of Christ is really quickly. Church of Christ, if you ask them when they were founded, they will say they're the original church. Uh, this is just not right. It's not meant to be an insult, but historically speaking, what we call the Church of Christ is a non-denominational today. It was founded in the 1800s during the um, Restoration Movement, and it became its own official thing in the early 1900s. That said, it grew abundantly from where I'm from. The joke is um, there's a Church of Christ on every street corner, or if you don't lock your church, go next door, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the basic views of the um, Church of Christ is it's non-denominational. Now, I could give you a really long story about this. I'm not going to. I considered it, but it would take way too long to do it. But non-denominational means that they don't answer to each other, their, their own independent things. Well, that is true, but at the same time, regardless of which Church of Christ you go to, they're going to have the exact same makeup for the most part when it comes to organization and how they do things. Um, they will argue they don't have tradition in their church, but this is clearly a tradition they have, so um, that, that's an issue they deny, you know, greatly. Um, they also believe the Bible is the only thing that you need. Um, while we will have another separate video specifically on this, the issue with this is if you have a disagreement about the Bible, your church splits, okay? This is one of the actual reasons why I left the Church of Christ was because of a split, which I will explain in a little bit. Um, now, I come from a Church of Christ family. My grandparents are Church of Christ on both sides of my family. My parents are Church of Christ. And so I was Church of Christ, you know, just do what your parents do type of thing. And, excuse me for leaning back a little bit, I've been walking all day. Um, so, you know, I just believe what my parents did, and really, there is some merit to that, but at the same time, you should really do your own research to make sure that's what you want to believe. So many people I know have left the church in general, just overall Christianity, because of overbearing parents. So always let, you know, ch your kids educate them, and then let them make their decisions. Um, that's how I was raised, and growing up, we didn't go to church that much, and when I got in high school, I actually made friends with a lot of Christians up in my um, in my class and below my class and eventually I went to a Baptist revival um, I got saved I was all excited and my dad laughed at me because the Church of Christ doesn't believe that they don't believe you're saved until you've actually been baptized so that was a bit hurtful for me but I was eventually baptized in the Church of Christ on my 18th birthday um, so it's easy for me to keep up with how old I am as a Christian um, so because of this, I went to Lipscomb University, which is also a Church of Christ um, University in the state of Tennessee. It's a very great school. I love it. There were some changes that happened my last couple of years there that I did not like at all. Most people didn't like and had to do with a liberal president taking over that changed a lot of conservative concepts. Um, aside from that, though, you know, it was a great school. I, education program is extremely good. That's what I majored in was history education. So... Um, that's where I met my wife, so of course it's a great place and stuff. Um, a little bit of history of my wife is she didn't really go to a specific church. They did go to a church. It was a Baptist church, but they didn't actually adhere strictly to um, Baptist beliefs. Um, my wife jokingly calls what they call, what she was raised with as Donnaism. Her mom's name is Donna, and they just add ism to it. Um, you know, so her mom couldn't go out that much because she had a lot of allergies, so they just worshipped at home. Um, which for me was a bit awkward on some of the things they did, but it turned out it wasn't so random of what they did. You know, I learned that a lot of different people do it. Um, but while we were at Lipscomb, we went to um, Granny White Church of Christ, which was next door. You know, a great church. I love it. I still think of them as my family, and I know most of them would be upset if they knew I'd become Catholic, but, you know, 
when we're in Nashville, we, we try to go there. We haven't been able to make it in quite a while, but we try to go up there so we can visit some, some of our old friends. Um, now, excuse me, I got married, of course, and we had children. I actually have six kids now. Um, while we were still in school, we had my um, oldest son, and then a couple of years later, we had my twin daughters. So, yeah, we had a big, big thing there. In our first three years of marriage, we had three kids. Um, we've actually consecutively had a kid, a pregnancy every other year. It's been kind of a weird trend we're doing, not purposely, it just happens. Um, but over time, I drifted away from going to church, especially after we moved away from Nashville and went to my hometown. And I actually went back to my original church that I had started in and something was wrong and my parents weren't there and so I eventually asked them what was going on they said oh they split up and I said well, what for they said oh there's some disagreement and I don't know if it was probably money that or leadership type of situation regardless they made this one little argument made the church split into three different groups one stayed at the church one went to a church just about a quarter mile down the road and the other actually went the opposite direction into somebody's house and they have a house church now and I was just like, that church, it broke over something so, you know, futile, I mean, something so ridiculous, you know, why, how strong is your faith if you break o break up over that? So, you know, I looked at some other churches of Christ, and we wound up going to one, which made me think of our, the Granny White we used to go to, but something just wasn't there, it didn't seem right. So, I eventually just gradually stopped going. Some of this was also because of scheduling issues. Um, during all this, I got really involved with studying the occult, and I experienced some awkward things. My wife originally thought I was just imagining stuff, but then we had a few situations that were too hard to ignore and just say were imagination. The biggest one being one night I looked down our hallway and just flat within my field of view, a shadow moved at the end of the hallway into the closed door of my um, daughter's room. I have three daughters at this point. In the instant that happened, they all just started screaming their heads off, and they were dead asleep on the other side of the house. So. I knew something happened. It freaked me out, and so I knew I needed to start re-exploring my faith. And and um, I'll have another video about the situation and stuff, just so I'm not taking too much time right now. But I started looking into different churches and stuff, and I still was a little unsure. And you know, I think during this entire concept, I had two signs from God. One was. I just went outside one night. I was dead inside. I felt I had nothing. I just looked up to the sky and I said, God, I love you. I know you're there, but please just give me a sign you can hear me. And that exact moment, this massive meteor just shot across the sky. I broke down in tears at that moment. And I worshiped God. I thanked him. And I started doing as much studying as I could into um, what I needed to do. And the big issue I had was there's over 40,000 denominations in the world. So I needed to branch this down. So I started studying major denominations. And I had a friend on Facebook. I went to college with him. And he had, at some point in time between college and at that point in time, had um, converted to Eastern Orthodoxy. Um, so he said, he asked me this question. He said, why would you consider a church that's under 500 years old? And I said, that's actually a really good point because just like a family tree when the further back you go the more pure the blood is so the same would apply to a corporation or even the church so I eventually I broke this down into um, three major groups and that was studying Lutheranism Eastern Orthodoxy and the Catholic Church now as I grew up was taught to hate the Catholic Church so um, I'm gonna leave the rest of this to my next video and we'll continue that and you'll have to you'll finally understand my um struggles not only i but my wife went through as well so um, i will see you in our next video and thank you for watching